Okay, so here's uh, two paint cans. Bought at Home Depot for about five bucks each. Just regular steel empty paint cans and Christmas wrapping. So I'll start by cutting the top off one of the paint cans and uh, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, here's the top of a paint can just cut off with a regular can opener but cut off around the side edge and then the middle of the lid is cut out. Um, I cut that with a nibbler and then bent the inside edges up and I'm going to show you in a second how to make that the diaphragm for the microphone. Okay, so here's the metalized polyester Christmas wrapping. As you can see, it's like a chrome-like look, and as you can see from the meter, one side of the polyester is conductive, and the other side is not. So we're going to use the conductive side up so it has no chance of contacting the back plate. So this is the paint can lid's inner rim with the uh, metal center cut out. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to put the con conductive side of the wrapping paper pointed what will be up. I'm going to set the fit piece over it and then I'm going to take a board on top and hammer them together gently around the edges. So now you can see they're hammered together the two pieces of the paint can lid and the metalized polyester in the center is stretched to a nearly perfect finish. There's one little kink at the edge right there and I'm going to trim the excess off with an X-Acto knife and I'll show you the diaphragm in a minute. Okay, so there's the trimmed off poly and the metalized film is now a perfect mirror, as you can see, or damn near perfect. Um, and uh, you can also see now from the edge any unevenness in the way the film was set. So you can see that this edge, this edge a little high. So we're going to tap that back down to try to get a more even stress on the diaphragm. All right, so now <laughs> here's our ridiculously large condenser microphone diaphragm made of about three inches diameter um, more than three inches probably of stretched metalized poly and remember the conductive surface is going to point away from the back plate um, this is going to make sure that if the diaphragm bottoms out it doesn't short the phantom power so let's go to the next stage which is preparing to measure and fit a back plate all right, so now this is the back side that's going to be in the can when the capsule is used for directionality. So this outside will be the sound field surface. So the back, we're going to need a back plate behind it. So we're going to do that by measuring exactly the diameter, or as closely to exactly as we can with a cheap caliper the diameter of the circle we're fitting it into. And we come up with 3.37 3 inches. So we're going to cut a circle of 16 gauge steel just a little bit smaller, about a couple thousand smaller than that size. Okay, here's the masking tape on the 16 gauge steel with a trusty Sharpie compass drawn perfect circle. I drew two. The first one was a little small, so I redrew it and it measures 3.35 inches. It'll be a hair small than the gap it's supposed to fit in. Remember, it's supposed to fit just inside this back plate area in the diaphragm. So we'll set up the back plate, we'll cut the steel, and we'll uh, 
figure out a way to mount it. I already have a way in mind and it'll be pretty easy to demonstrate. Alright, I'm going to continue after going out to launch. Okay, so we just tried uh, the microphone. It's plugged into the Focusrite Octopri and uh, we're using, <laughs> irony of ironies, we're using a Shure KSM44 as the preamp because it's the only true condenser microphone I have, true capacitor microphone, not an electret, where the charge from the preamp actually makes it all the way to the capsule at a full 48 volts, it's actually 50 volts, and uh, we'll turn them, this is the microphone, I have a grounding clip to the chassis, and the two uh, uh, capsule leads to the Shure which have temporarily disconnected from its own capsule. And this is the way we have it set up. And I'll, I'll take it apart to show you. Here's uh, removing the clips. Phantom power is off, so we should just disconnect the microphone. I'm going to disconnect the microphone just to be cautious. Hard to do one-handed while I'm holding the flip cam, but okay. Okay, so here's the whole diaphragm assembly. Now this back plate is, I'll show you how it was machined. Machining might be uh, using the word loosely, but uh, okay, so I got the back plate out. This is uh, 16 gauge steel from Home Depot that I uh, drew on a compass, uh, cut with a jigsaw, and then uh, put the center screw through it, spun it on a drill with a dr or Dremel counter-rotating at the edge to perfectly round it, and then I marked off a grid on it to cut vent holes, and now I marked the, I insulated the edge with two layers of electrical tape. Now if you notice they're also those two layers of electrical tape also overlap to the front of the plate to act as an insulator and standoff to create a gap between the front plate diaphragm and the back plate. All right, so now I've finished the construction. I have the microphone working diaphragm right here. However, the signal and noise ratio I'm getting from it is absolutely horrid. Two reasons, I think. I think that the gap between the flexible diaphragm and the back plate is too large, so I'm not getting a good capacitor reaction off the diaphragmatic motion. Also, I believe that the complete lack of any kind of RF shielding is just uh, not going to work. So I'm going to get a couple colanders, uh, the little handle type um, half uh, sphere um, uh, strainers and make a large ball uh, RF cage for this so that I can remove it from the cage for demonstration purposes for the class and so that I can mount it in the cage when it's connected with the cage being grounded to the system for RF shielding. That should give me at least 35 or 40 dB signal to noise ratio which I think will be pretty damn good for a classroom demonstration. Um, when I get to that point, I will record some audio with it and upload that, and I also hope to record the in-class demonstration and the student reactions, and I'll upload that. Thanks for watching.